Hey guys, hey welcome guys. back. We are here. We're, we're here to answer your questions. We have Karen in the house. In the house. Um, With my volume off. <laughs> okay, good. If there's anything that uh, we say that's even remotely um, coming close to treating you or diagnosing or preventing any diseases, uh, we're not trying to do that. Just, uh, it's just for food for thought, for you to do your research, um, check with your doctor before taking any advice. Today we want to get through as many questions as possible. We have tons of people on social media, we have tons of callers, and I know that's what you guys want to know. But here's the key thing, um, keep your questions to one specific question. I really can't, don't have time in the setup to be able to go through your history in a lot of detail, so just give me your quick question and then we'll answer it. Okay, Karen? Yes. Sound good? Yes. Sound like a plan of action? All right, so let's go to Al from uh, Michigan. Are you there? Hey, Dr. Berg, how's it going? Hey, good, how are you? What was your question? I'm great. So uh, I had a question about cholesterol, uh, yeah. but before I actually ask, I just want to let you know that uh, over the past couple of months, I've been working out four to five days a week, uh, performing HIIT cardio two to three days a week. And uh, I'm not doing keto, but my diet's been mostly the same for the most part. And the only thing that I can say has changed is I incorporated intermittent fasting after watching some of your videos a couple months back. So my last blood work showed that I had an LDL level of like 160, but low triglycerides and uh, a remnant cholesterol of like 9. And my doctor was really trying to push me to take statins, but I'm like really against, against it. So uh, what gets me is I also like lost weight, like fat, gained muscle, and my A1C was normal. But I did have low vitamin D. So I guess my question is just should I be concerned about my LDL? Okay, Gal, thanks for the question and, and your history. Um, and the quick question you have. Um, I can't tell you not to take statins. Um, all I can tell you is that um, you're doing intermittent fasting. It's created some really good changes. Your remnant cholesterol is really low, which means there's not a lot of cholesterol hanging out. Uh, your triglycerides apparently are down. But here is the thing that jumps out. You're not doing keto. So that being said, I think you should do keto, NIF, because it's the food that you're eating is really, really going to be um, determining if you have all the nutrients and not just about weight loss, it's about long-term health and then longevity. So if you can actually apply healthy keto exactly like I recommend it, I think you're going to be safe. But, you know, it's one of those questions I can't tell you not to take medications. Thanks, thanks Dale, for your, your question, your quick question. So let's go to... Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, far... Uh, Farah. Farah, you're from Vancouver. You had a quick question as well. Yes. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question about the adrenal and cortisol support uh, supplement. Yeah. Um, can I take that? I have lots of stress and I need patience. So I can I take that twice a day in the morning and evening? That's the time I feel more stressed out. You know, um, there's two products that I have. One is Adrenal Cortisol Relief and the other one is Adrenal Advanced Formula. The Advanced Formula is like really heavy duty and you can take as much as you want. There's no side effects. You could take it through the day. When, before you go through stress, you can take more. You're going to feel like a nice little calm feeling. Um, it's a little stronger. The other one is um, for the regular person that is like not completely overwhelmed and that works really good too and you can, there's no Contraindications: You can take it. You can take more through the day. Take more when you go through stress. Um, but um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about uh, taking too much. So that's, try it out. I think it should help you. All right, good. So now, Karen. Yeah. We're going to go to you. You. I think we have people coming, calling from all I over the state. Right. <laughs> I didn't note it down, but there's people from all over the world, Bavaria, Germany, uh, India, all of the United States, um, <coughs> Canada. I haven't even looked because okay. I started to totally write fine. questions down. Then why don't we just go through some questions? There's a few questions, questions, right, that you were interested in taking up. Yeah. And I made a note of them. So let me go back here to the beginning. Begin at the beginning. Okay. So... Uh, I think it's uh, Davinder 
Mm -hmm. uh, Davinder from uh, YouTube says, Hi, Dr. Berg. I'm not on keto, but I feel dizzy all the time. My body is unbalanced, blurry vision, bloating at night. Blood pressure is normal. If it is due to adrenal, which test should I do? And what can I do to stop it? Yeah, okay. So, um, first of all, get on keto, okay? Because... Um, I knew that was coming. Yeah. I knew that it, was coming. I could have answered that question. Because here's I've been in practice for 29 years, and I'm working with all these people, and I wish I would have knew what I knew now back then, because I would have just got everyone on keto. Because if you try to start treating or patching up all these symptoms one by one, individually, without getting the foundation, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, there's so many remedies for dizziness and this and that. I mean, you, I mean it could be any number of a thousand different things. It's just going to be expensive urine as far as you're taking supplements and things like that. Get on the basic of keto and you're going to probably find most of those conditions are going to go bye-bye. So that's what you need to do. Standard. Answer. Keto, intermittent fasting, yeah. read the book. That's right. Do the do. Okay, good. Next one. Um, here, Rebecca mm -hmm. on YouTube. My husband and I both get uh, gas pretty much after everything, uh, anything we consume. We do IF, low carbs, healthy fats. We're very healthy and fit. Um, they're only 51, 52. Yeah. Gas is uh, probably the biggest indicator of low stomach acid. So. But here's the thing, if you eat and you get gas right away uh, and you're on keto, it's usually going to be the sugar alcohols that you're consuming, especially if you're both having gas and uh, it's usually you're probably eating similar foods and you probably are doing the keto bombs or the little the similar type things that have the sugar alcohols, which they do create gas. That's probably the number one thing, especially if you're doing like chocolate, those chocolate, um, low carb chocolate treats. So if you're doing that, you're going to have to cut those out. Second thing is that, of course, if you're not doing fruit, will cause the gas, and so will hummus. That can create gas. Certain vegetables can create gas, especially some of the cruciferous, unless you steam them. Um, that being said, if you rule all that out, it could mean that you just need to acidify the stomach. There actually is three common symptoms, Karen, that indicate low stomach acid, and this is so important. One is indigestion. So if you have indigestion, you eat, and then just the food just feels stuffed and it's sitting there, you need more stomach acid. Gas is one, and then also uh, heartburn or acid reflux. So you want to take apple cider vinegar for sure, but there's another product called betaine hydrochloride. Um, I have something that combines them together, and you would take probably three to four, maybe five before a meal, or even after, and you take that over a period of time. What that is that thing? What's that? What supplement? It's digestive uh, formula. And I, I wanted to put apple cider vinegar powder and betaine hydrochloride together because that'll help build up your acid, which I'm telling you, if like if you have low stomach acid, you're not going to be able to break down the and extract the B12, which is very important. And um, not only is B12 involved with anemia, but neurological stuff that can literally be permanent. Some people that are deficient in B12 have literally stabbing, burning, severe pain to the point where it's almost like debilitating. I mean, and it could be permanent. And I'm reflecting back on some patients that I had a long time ago that I wish I would have known about B12. They were totally deficient in B12. So, now, anyway. Now, also in the gas department. Yes. Microbes and all the leafy greens can cause gas. Yes. Yes. That's right, Karen. That and is exactly right. how do I know right. that? because you've watched my video on that many times. No. Um, but the fiber, if you overdo it with fiber and you're not used to it, and you have to kind of gradually go up, you can, it can kind of gas you out. So also the type of greens that you're doing. Um, if you do like leafy greens, those are pretty safe. But if you're doing like adding all this new stuff, kale that you're not used to and massive amounts, it could actually just create a problem because you don't have the microbes to break it down. So adjust that to your tolerance. There we go. All right, good. Okay, good. And now I have one more. Yes. Give me a good one. Okay. Now, oh, I wrote it down mostly, which is good, because on Facebook, they don't have timestamps. 
at least not that I can see. So anyway, Patricia on Facebook says, she's been doing lazy keto for mm -hmm. five months now. She lost 10 pounds, but now she just can't lose any more weight and she's so frustrated. What should she do? Well, <laughs> there's a couple definitions of lazy keto. The Isn't that like sort of keto? No, oh. keto, it's like you're not, you're just not measuring your, your macros. Oh. That is the technical definition which is different than dirty keto, which uh. is eating at whatever, 7-Eleven. Um, so <clears throat> what you might want to do is measure your macros <laughs> and see where you're at with your carbs and your fats. Um, I actually have a really, really good video. Um, it's on my website. I'm trying to think where it is. I don't actually know where it is. But um, is it? it has to do with, um, ver it's like the person that's tried everything and nothing's worked. Um, it's basically a, an upgraded version of my keto and steroids video. But in the meantime, because I don't have it Cut right at the top the of my head, go to my website and just search out. There's a search bar on the top, um, Extreme Keto or um, Keto and Steroids, and watch that video. You'll get a lot of tips. And that'll get you out of it. Yeah, There'll there's be so no many more lazy that, keto. Yeah, there's so many things you can do. But especially if you, I, I have tons of videos on Plateau. This morning I was going through uh, the comments, and I do, guys, I read all your comments. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. I just don't have time to respond to every one of them, and the reason for that is because 99.9999999% of the time, there's a video on it. So I, I mean, I could just say, search the video. There's a video on this video. So what I'm finding is people are not doing a search, Dr. Berg, with the subject. They're not, um, because I have a video on it. So. And it gets tiring after a while just saying, search that out. Right. And then trying me to go cut and paste a video, I just don't have the time. I know. So. But that's good to know. Yeah. I mean, people, a lot of people make small changes. They lose some weight. And then they, they plateau. We hear it all the time. So if it's you're doing keto, it's just lazy. Don't be lazy. And Let's go to Karen from Florida. Karen. Are you, are you there, Karen? Hi, Doc. I'm here. And Hi. I have a question uh, of some data that I read about apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and I wanted you to deny or confirm or expand <laughs> upon the concept. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I read that uh, if you you must taste the bitterness for it to trigger certain pancreatic activities, that is the beginning of the benefits that you receive from the apple cider vinegar. I don't like apple cider vinegar, so I've been taking it in various elixirs that I invent to make it taste good. Do I need to have that acidic taste on my tongue, and could I just taste it and then go to my elixir? <laughs> Would that very, be enough to very, stimulate the pancreatic action? Hey, that's legitimate. Uh, very good question. Um, no, you don't have to taste the bitterness. The, bi the bitterness is not the element that makes the big change. It's the acetic acid that creates the big change. Um, so as long as you get it in your body, any, anyhow, you can camouflage it, you can hide it. Uh, I would recommend diluting it, not having it straight, drink it with a straw. Um, you can take it in a pill form. It's going to create the exact same effects. So no need to um, taste the bitterness. No suffering. Yep. No need to feel the pain. All right, so Angela, you're from North Carolina. You had a question about ozone. What, what is your question? Yes. Are there any other therapies like ozone? Or is it just ozone? Any other therapies like ozone? Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, you can do, uh, have you heard of oxygen therapy? Hy hyperbaric chamber? Oxygen therapy. Yeah. Okay, oxygen therapy and ozone. Okay. No yeah. others. Now, there's, there's many different therapies. What, what are you trying to achieve? What's your goal? Um, well, would that help my, because sometimes my eye jumps, would that help that and my shoulder aches sometimes? Okay. If the eye jumps, um, like a twitching type thing, what that is, um, it's a pH issue. It's really a calcium issue. You have calcium building up on the nerve because your pH is too alkaline. So we want to acidify it, take some apple cider vinegar, and that should mobilize the calcium buildup on the nerve. Boom. Problem solved. Um, and then you said your shoulder hurts. Watch my video on shoulder pain. I have a ton of things, techniques that you can do, but you're going to probably find that your pain will go away 
with apple cider vinegar. It's a great anti-inflammatory. And one last thing, vitamin D is behind a lot of chronic pain. So if you guys have joint pain, of course keto and IF for sure, but vitamin D, add that in there. Um, say goodbye to inflammation and pain as well. Good question. All right, Karen. Okay, Cindy on Facebook wants to know, how does she know when she's replenished and raised her stomach acid enough to stop taking the betaine hydrochloride? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question because, you know, it's such a common problem, yet doctors never test for your stomach acid. I mean, there's a, I think it's Heidenberg test that is done maybe in Europe, if you're lucky. There's some, it's just like they don't test for it. And it's, um, there's one test that's invasive, but they never check for that which is very crazy since it's such a common problem. But um, the way that you know is that you, is a, you have no more indigestion, you have no more gas, you have no more GERD, more, no more heartburn, the food digests quickly, it doesn't sit there a long time, you can digest meat fine, then you know you have enough. Okay? Yes, great. Good. All right. Do you have anything else? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. So, um, Gammy, you're from Georgia. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, yes, that's fine. Gammy. <laughs> oh, Gammy. Okay. It's okay. Um, uh, hi, Dr. Bird. I, I was calling because we've been doing the keto. Um, actually, my whole family, including my daughter, who was 15 years old and was 300 pounds at the time, and it's gone great. Um, we both lost about 30 pounds. But I'm worried um, about her now because she actually gained seven pounds, and I don't know why, and she kind of hasn't lost any more after that. I'm continually losing, but she's not. And I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong. I mean, she was my main priority so that I could get her back in school. I had to pull her out because of bullying. So um, I'm really worried that I keep losing and she doesn't. Um, the, the only thing that, that we eat differently is that I'll tend to eat more vegetables than her because she doesn't like them. And um, she'll still have, like, some dark chocolate. She'll melt it and have a little bit of that in the middle of the day. Um, so I don't know if that could be it. She has a history of taking antibiotics for years because she had urinary reflux. I don't know if that messed up something. So I'm just really concerned and see what, you know, what advice you have in order for me to get her to losing weight again. How old is she? She's 15. 15. And how tall, um, how tall is she? She's 5'6". And then how much does she weigh? Um, right now, she's weighing, I think it's 277. Okay. Um, and then she, she was weighing less. She, she gained like seven pounds, and now she's just stuck there for like the past week. Yeah. Here's, here's what I would do. Um, I would search on my video on keto and steroids and really um, bring the carbs down just a little bit more with her. And definitely, she's going to have to do uh, sugar-free chocolate at the meal, not in between the meal. The real important thing with someone like that is to make sure she gets the nutrients. Either you have to, have to enhance it, if she doesn't like vegetables, you can get a concentrated, like the veggie solution thing to get the greens in there, and then do more strict intermittent fasting for her because she has a bit to lose and that's what's going kick to it, kick it in high gear. Um, probably a probiotic wouldn't hurt, and then definitely get her finding some activity that she likes to exercise. So at that age, you want to keep her very active. That's what I would do. Um, Strict intermittent fasting with more, without depriving her of nutrients. That's really the key. So try those things. I think that should help. All right. So I think um, I want to talk about one thing that's interesting. Okay. Okay. So you're familiar with GMO foods, right? right. Soy, corn oil, all that, right? Right. But when you're le reading labels, ca canola oil, you've, you know that's GMO. But have you heard about cottonseed oil? Yeah. No one ever talks about that anymore. Okay. <laughs> I don't think they ever did. Um, but cottonseed oil is also GMO. I, I always got the idea it was just a very cheap oil. It is. It is. And you know where they get cottonseed oil from? Cottonseed? Yes. From the cotton plant. <laughs> okay. See? Ding, ding, ding. Okay. So um, it's kind of like they have to find out where to put this stuff, this byproduct, but they make oil with it. Very cheap very processed, deodorized, bleached GMO. Um, so when you're reading labels and you say, oh good, it's no soy, no corn, no canola, but it's cottonseed, you know. And they said, I would recommend getting an organic 
good healthy oil like olive oil, coconut oil, something like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's another GMO oil. And you know what they're going to be coming out with very soon? What? The USDA just approved it. Um, edible cotton. It tastes a little like hummus. I'm not kidding. Why? Because it's, it's going to be, it, people are starving in different countries. It's a way to Is world Is it nutritious? Hunger. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Cotton? Yeah, edible cotton, GMO edible cotton. Well, if the government approved it. Yeah, it must be you good. You know it's got to be good. Maybe when, if you can dip it in your hummus and chew it. I don't know if it's, it's going to kind of create a, like a hairball or something. I don't understand but, um, it. Yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> Steve's eating his shirt right now. You can actually, yeah, start I chewing on your if cotton. If you're really shirt. hungry, right, go to. Now, uh, I, I just remember avoiding cottonseed oil because I used to get migraine headaches and mm. that was known as a cause for headaches. Yeah. yeah, it used to be in the Crisco too as a hydrogenated thing. I don't, I don't think they use it anymore. But yeah, so it's just one, another one of those uh, interesting um, oils that you don't really think about. And a lot of times when you, when you read labels, it doesn't even tell you what oil. It says, well, it might be this, this, or this oil. It could be, they, <laughs> it might say, it could be sunflower or safflower or or uh, olive oil, or it could be soy, canola, or this other thing. So you know they're probably using the cheapest one. Right. Anyway, Derek, you're back, New York. You had a quick question. Go ahead, Derek. Hey, what's up, Dr. Burke? How you doing? Hey, Karen. Hey. Good. How you guys doing? Yeah, Go my, my question is basically kind of like the theme of today's stomach acid. Um, uh, my stomach acid is coming up again, Dr. Berg, and um, it's throwing me off of my keto and IF. I do really well, but um, so my stomach acid came, you know my history, but it came from me actually going prolonged periods of time, as you know, without eating. And so, for example, if I just, if I get hungry and I don't eat something right then and there, it, it starts spiraling out of control and just totally throws me off my keto and everything. And the last thing that I had was, I told you about my younger cousin. She has a condition called Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy. You told me you'd look into that and then kind of tell me, you know, later on about it. I was wondering if there was anything about that, and that, that's all I got today. So you gave me two questions. You squeezed in another one there. Let's see how you did that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I had to. Derek, I'll have to do um, a video on that um, because it's not going to be a quick answer to your question. But here's the thing with the stomach. Uh, if you're battling the stomach and you're taking the betaine hydrochloride and you're doing this, realize that um, there's some other factors involved as well. And I'm talking about trace minerals, specifically zinc, zinc, zinc. Um, if you're doing long-term fasting and you have symptoms, it could be you just don't have the reserve of zinc. There is no uh, real storage of zinc in the body. And so this is the kind of like the, the negative part of doing intermittent fasting. If you're not eating the right foods when you're doing fasting, like when you're eating, especially these trace minerals, and I'm talking about zinc too, uh, you don't store it. So that could be one huge problem. Zinc um, is one of the best things for ulcers. It's also necessary to help build hydrochloric acid and it does so many other things. It's involved in like, I think, 2,000 different enzymatic reactions. But I would uh, put the zinc in there, uh, iodine, maybe a blend of uh, trace minerals with zinc, and see if that can't help you. But um, yeah, we don't store zinc, but two billion people on this planet are deficient in zinc. I'll be talking, that, talking about that extensively at this thing called the Keto Summit Keto. coming up. In two weeks, Karen. Summit. Well, now that you mention that. Yeah. Bye, Derek. Talk to you next time. Uh, I, I was remiss last week in not bringing the list of exhibitors because this year, not only are there going to be a ton of great speakers, but there are going to be a ton of companies. It's going to be like a fair, keto fair. So I'm going to mention them, and okay. then if you know anything about them, add. Okay. Okay? Keto Mojo. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. They, they, they uh, sell those uh, the blood tests, but they have a com combination of a, a blood level glucose blood test as well as a ketone test. Uh, two different strips, but it's a great way to evaluate your uh, 
uh, keto and your blood sugars at the same time. Cool. Kabash Foods. Love it. Yeah, they're going to be there. It's uh, like a pizza crust. All yeah. All these different flavor pizza crusts. We did they're, a review. I, I think we did a review on them last year. That's they're coming right, again that's this right. year. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. Uh, U.S. Wellness Meats. Yeah, we, we use them a lot. Um, and uh, they're great. They're organic. I love their bacon. I love their bacon. Mm -hmm. They have great sugar-free sausage, breakfast Hamburger. sausage. Oh, hamburger. the sausage, yeah. It's really the hot dogs. Our freezer's too. full of their stuff. Yeah. Okay, love good fats. I think they're new. They are us. new. Okay, good. Yeah. Choco Perfection. Perfect chocolate. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> I love it. Good. Uh, the Ketogenic Baking Company. Now, I think they were there but didn't have samples or something last year. I, anyway, I, I, I don't want to say what I think it is because I'm not sure 100%, but they're going to be there. But you can Google it. You can Google it and find out about them. Kettle and Fire is going to be there. Redmond Salt is going to be at the summit. Select Savory Seasonings is going to be at the summit. Um, Guilt-Free Goodies, that's actually a, com a local company that bakes and you can order mm. your guilt-free goodies from them. Without and guilt? I have I like eaten that. I don't like to eat when I have guilt. And they are goodies. Goodies. They are really good. Uh, keto Fasting Tea is going to be there. Keto Fast Tea. And I think they're going to be doing samples. Almost all these guys are going to be doing samples. And, um, you know, you can get on their list and stuff. Adapt Your Life is going to be there. That's Dr. Westman's group, right? Mm -hmm. And then Bragg. Bragg is going to gift every attendee a little special gift. And um, that's going to be really exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. All right. So, so should we, a lot we, of you guys are actually coming to the summit. Yeah, there is a cutoff. Some of, there might be one or two that might soon. not come. Cutoff coming but, soon. But um, I think you guys should register. You guys should sign up right now. You're kicking me under the desk. Yeah, because I was trying to explain. You, uh, <laughs> you're explaining at the exact same time. <laughs> Let's talk so, at the same time. So, okay. yes, come to the summit. Go to the website. Make your ticket. Love to meet you guys. We're going to have a blast. We have all these amazing speakers. We are. It's going to be the largest keto event we've ever had. Of course, we only had two, but still, <laughs> it's going to be larger than last year. But it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, Great data, great information. It's going to take your health to a whole new level. You should definitely show up. Okay, what did you want to say? Okay, good. Well, Deborah and a couple other people are asking on Facebook. Um, an 11, oh, not, not Deborah, I'm sorry, there's someone else. 11 year old overweight, what macros? So if you have a young, a young child, a tween, a teen, is it really any different? program-wise, than an adult? Um, no, no, um, it's not. It's not going to be different for, for a child. Um, now, let's say, for example, your child is um, very thin, mm -hmm. kind of super metabolism, and let's say they're on the wrestling team, and they're on the football team, and they're like massively doing uh, triathlons. So <laughs> if you do the version of keto that a lot of people do, they're going to get so thin, they're going to have to bring their carbs probably 70 grams and probably even do sweet potato or yams or even a little brown rice because... But that's as an athlete, as yeah, a super as athlete, athlete yeah. as a child. Yeah. But we're talking about overweight. Oh, yeah. Then you, you want to do the same macros. I mean, this brings up one little point that I want to just tie in this because sometimes you get critics. I know this is surprising. You're going to get critics of keto or naysayers are going to say, oh, keto. Dangerous. They're mainly going to say it's going to be dangerous, it's unhealthy, give you side effects, whatever. Don't ever, ever defend that. Don't ever like try to just basically ask them one question. What diet do you recommend? Because they will never give you the solution. What do you recommend that's healthy? What, what's your recommendation? And what diet are you doing, right? That stops the conversation right there. If they actually say, well, I, I do what's scientifically, you know, accepted and whatever. If they go in that area, well, what is that? Like I do what you know, the AMA and the um, food pyramid. I do um, um, <laughs> what's well accepted in the community, whatever scientifically, right? I'll say, well, tell me um, why giving someone 65% of their calories carbohydrates is healthy. 
So just get them to tell you why taking two to 300 grams of carbohydrates per day is healthy. Go ahead, I'm listening. And just sit there and see and what they say. A daily allowance of sugar. Yeah, like I want to know. Food pyramid. And then, okay, thank you. Any other reasons? that they, they just will not have a conversation. So if you compare what they're recommending for carbs versus what we're recommending, we're, like we're talking 65% of your entire calories carbohydrates. We're talking 5%. <laughs> so it's such a difference. And they're saying that our, our program is unhealthy. I'd like to know what way. You know? So anyway, it's just um, I think people don't really want to, some of those guys don't really want to know about it. They just want to kind of you know, press your buttons. Well, there, there's a lot of, it's just like the news. There's stuff moved into the news that is alarming. I mean, the same with the dog food information I got on my dog food. It's just alarming. It was really alarming and it was pushed off on what was me. It, what's like, alarming? I was told that uh, the food that I give my dog, which is really uh, like uh, Origin or Blue or something like that, that has vegetables in it, but a lot of meats and organs and things. And by the way, our dog also eats green peppers and cabbage. I mean, he likes those things. We occasionally give him something like that. But that that dog food was dangerous. Because? And that we needed to go back to the grain, because it was grain-free. Right. And that right. we needed to go back to grain-free. These were boutique and fad diets with no history of anything and that they could lead to something. So this was very alarming and I was uh, uh, kind of reprimanded a little bit for feeding my dog and told I should change. So I went home and I did research on it. And there's no correlation. Well, the, doesn't, aren't, aren't dogs, aren't they raised? Aren't, aren't they supposed to consume wheat and grains? I'm rice and oats. They, in, in the wild, they eat How rice and oats. How do I pronounce oats. this? Shoshana. Shoshana. Sorry about that. Are you there? Good, good, yes, good morning, Dr. Berg and Karen. Hi. Good morning. Um, I was diagnosed, good morning, with pre-diabetes about six months ago and we noticed that I experienced something called the dawn effect with my fasting morning glucose uh -huh. and I started keto about a month ago and I've already lost about 14 pounds and I'm off medication for that um, and I am doing intermittent fasting and I was wondering if there's anything that I should be doing differently because I'm still having a little bit of that dawn effect in the morning yeah um, and then if you have time, if you might discuss berberine as a supplement, um, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Sure. Uh, that's a, it's an okay supplement for, um, for insulin resistance. Honestly, I've, I've experimented with it. I didn't see like dramatic stuff compared to just getting in the healthy keto. The, what, what you need to do to speed up the dawn phenomenon, which is just a transitional thing where you're waking up in the morning, you're on keto, and your blood sugar is high, but you didn't eat any sugar because your liver is making sugar. It could be the cortisol that's mobilizing your sugar, which is not a problem because it's going to be temporary and you just need to exercise and then boom, burn off that sugar. But to speed things up, this is what you need to do right here. Right in my face, right here. <laughs> so do, do the exact um, plan that I recommend because what I built into that is um, also tailor-made uh, tweaks to it after you do the basic to your body type and you can actually start to speed up the results. Um, so I'm assuming maybe you're already doing that. And then if you are, then you just need to give it more time. That's, and you're gonna find that dawn phenomenon is gonna go bye-bye. But exercise will just burn off that extra sugar and um, your body's just making it. It's gonna, because the liver has to clean up all that fat on the liver and clean it out and it takes, takes a bit of months. So how much exercise would she need to do in the morning to burn that off? Depends, uh, probably maybe a half hour. Of what, walking or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and also Shoshana, you, you win the um, award for asking a quick question. Yes, thank you. That was you. awesome. We appreciate, appreciate that. that. You even get a bell. And, and the thing about prediabetes, so it's just such a common thing. Like they say it's between prediabetes and diabetes, they say like 65% of the population in the U.S. I think it's like 75, maybe mm. 80. Wow. Um, I want to ask this one question because I started to. It was Deborah's question on Facebook. 
She's been on uh, keto and IF for seven months, but her energy's gone really low. What does she do? Yeah, well, that, that just means that you're running out of B vitamins. You need more B1, B1, B1. Nutritional yeast. But which B? Uh, B1. Okay. Okay. Good question, Karen. Keep them rolling. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Alex from Florida. Had a question. Your mom had a kidney stone? Are you there, Alex? Next. Alex, we'll come back to you. Kimberly from Florida, you had a question. Um, go ahead. Yes. Hey, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, so recently I started having some t symptoms like really tight pressure in my chest, my upper back, and just staying nauseous all the time. So I went to the doctor, and they told me I had hyperkinesia, a high function in gallbladder. I don't know if I said that right, but, um, and he basically just told me, oh, and I'm, I do keto and I'll do intermittent fasting. I'll take tons of your vitamins and stuff, but he basically told me that it's just my choice if I want to take it out. And that was it. Like, no, like, I don't know if there's something I can do to, to help it. Mm -hmm. I'm already keto and intermittent fasting. Um, am I eating something, uh, even keto, that would hurt it? Or do I ask question. something? Like, I'm so lost. <laughs> question I have. Um, I'm assuming you watched all 35 of my gallbladder videos. But um, do you have... Do you I did, a, actually. Did you, <laughs> did you, do you eat a lot of nuts or, or peanut butter or nut butters? No. Well, I did um, in the beginning of my starting keto, which was about a year ago, but I don't now just because I'm not a real big fan of it. Okay, what about dairy? Yes, I do eat dairy daily. I try not to be taking too much, but I love dairy. Yeah. I love cheese. Try, <laughs> just try and experiment. Just cut out the dairy and just see if that doesn't help your gallbladder. There's certain things in dairy that could influence the, the liver and the gallbladder, and I've noticed that could aggravate it. So let's rule that out. If that's still, If it's still a problem, then what I would recommend is watch my video on YouTube on the gallbladder flush, which is not taking anything. It's like a manual massage on the opposite points to help facilitate uh, more of a, a flow through that area. Um, but as far as, um, I'm assuming you're probably taking the gallbladder formula, which is purified bile salts, but there's one thing that I think eventually will help you, which does take some time, is to start to acidify your stomach and start to build that stomach acid up, that seems to eventually help to regulate the gallbladder more than anything else long term. But you could also maybe adjust your fats. That also can actually, um, you might not have the bile reserve to be able to digest some of these fats and then it can strain the gallbladder. But thanks, Kim. Oops. Um, do quiz? we have a quiz today, Dr. Do we, we don't have a quiz, but I can, I can talk about, um, a few things. Okay. I want to just give a shout out to Blanca on YouTube because that question that Dr. Berg just answered would, would be an answer for you too. Okay. Okay. All right. So I tell you what, I don't want to waste time finding quiz because I, I basically got to a point where I ran out of information. Oh. Um, so. <laughs> well, let me see. I wake up in the morning and you come in and I'm not awake. And what do but I talk about? Immediately start talking about something. What was it this morning? Immediately you were talking about. I talked about, about seasonal. Oh, seasonal. you talked about children who were born autoimmune. MS, rheumatoid, diabetes type <laughs> one. Okay, and and the higher incidence. It wasn't per even good morning. It was. Did you know? Yeah, there's a high incidence of uh, people with autoimmune disease not only contracting this condition but being aggravated certain times of the month hmm. like January like February I was March. born in January by the way well that explains a lot <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding um, but here's the point it's the lowest vitamin D that you're gonna have so there's a huge connection between vitamin D and autoimmune even like children that are born in certain months or have a more of a tendency to get these uh, autoimmune because of the vitamin D levels that if your mom does not have a reserve of a certain nutrient, it can set you up for 
risk factors and weaknesses, which is just mind blowing when you talk about when you look at um, it all makes sense, you know. Um, which I'm going to talk a lot about this at the summit, so I'm not going to give it away. Something that I really want to talk about now, but I can't. So mm. I'm just going to withhold that, Karen. Okay. Thanks for spilling the beans of one of the things I was going to talk about. Well, you know, you just said you had a shortage of information. I, should I was being very sarcastic. <laughs> but I'm trying to get to you as many possible questions. Go for it. And You're you just list them here, and I'm going to go right over here to Alex. Okay. Are you there, Alex? Are you back? Okay, I'm going to. Okay, so Alex, I know you're asking about a kidney stone from your mom. So here's the thing. Did a lot of videos on kidney stones. I recently, by Dateline, if you search the last video that I did on kidney stones, I finally said, you know what? I'm going to put all this information in one video. So watch that video because there's a lot of things you can do. One of the most important things is you want to consume enough liquids, like um, about two liters minimally, maybe three. And then what will happen, you'll never get this super saturation of um, calcium or oxalates there. So you can just completely avoid a kidney stone just with that alone. But of course, avoid the spinach. Rhubarb. you got to cut down on your rhubarb. Oh, I like rhubarb um, in pie. When's the last time you had rhubarb? I haven't had rhubarb right. in like 20 years. <laughs> right. But it was, I liked it. So lemon juice on a regular basis increase something called citrates, which actually prevent the, the forming of the stone. But... Um, just watch the video. I have just too much data on that. Uh, and then Liam from New Hampshire. I think you, that's how you pronounce your name. Liam. Liam? Sorry. I am. <laughs> no, it's Liam. Good, Dr. Burke. Hi. Hi, Dr. Burke. First of all, first of all, I just want to say you are the man. You've helped, you've helped me. <coughs> excuse me. You've helped me more than most of my specialists. So awesome. that's a plus. Awesome. Thank um, you. My question is, I got really, really sick about, I'm 22, I got really sick about four months ago, and um, the doctors weren't really able to find out what it was, and I got really, really sick. I couldn't eat or drink hardly anything for almost two to three months, and now I'm back to the point where I'm eating full meals again, and I'm eating essentially my same capacity of food, um, and I've gone, I've jumped ship, I've, I've eliminated all added sugars, and gone way more organic, and vastly cut out the carbs and pretty much eating your meals, um, your high protein and then your vegetables in the afternoon. But the problem now is I, I lost about 35 pounds and I'm wondering, it seems like I'm having an absorption problem now and my GI specialist basically said, you know, you have mild gastroparesis, you have some slow motility in your small intestine. That's the only thing they're able to really find. Um, but he said that shouldn't be causing my absorption problems. Um, but I basically lost 35 pounds and I was sick, and now I'm eating full again, and I'm not gaining any of the weight back. Okay. Um, and now I'm also becoming anemic. So it seems like I'm my hair's thinning, my skin doesn't feel strong, yeah. my teeth don't feel strong. So there's an absorption problem somewhere, and we're not really able to find what it is. And I'm just trying to. I've been trying to eat way better and include apple cider vinegar, and I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to yeah. wonder what your take on that kind of seems. Okay, so I think uh, first thing you should come to the summit because we're, I'm going to be talking. One of the talks is about malabsorption. There's a whole lot to this. Um, you probably are going to need, especially for anemia, um, depending. You know, well, actually, for most of the anemias, whether it's a B12 or iron, you're going to um, the amount of um, Stomach help that you might need is going to be a lot, little bit more than apple cider vinegar for this. You might want to do straight betaine hydrochloride and even take something like 12, 10, 12 pills before you eat. It's not going to aggravate things. It's going to speed things up so you get the pH right in your stomach. Uh, you talked about with something called gastroparesis, which is the sluggishness of the digestion. We need to start by acidifying the stomach, and that does take months of consistent doing this to get this thing corrected. It sounds like you pretty much had the same diet I had when I was your age, and um, you need to start building up the reserve. There is a really good blood test that I'll have to post a video on that you can send out, get it done. It'll actually measure all your nutrient uh, deficiencies off of your white blood cells. It's quite amazing. You can just see what's, what's, what's missing because with you, you're still, uh, you need more data to figure out like what's going on because you're still on a mystery. But I would start with the stomach acid, Get more data with more testing, but make sure it's vitamin. 
I would do a trace mineral for sure, and that does take more time to work. Um, and then start to go as close to what I recommend is possible. And uh, make sure you take the B vitamins and the minerals. And um, I think that should handle it. What about the veggie solution? Would that absorb faster than if he's trying to get salads and vegetables? Or is yeah. this the similar it, situation? It does, it does go in pretty fast. Um, but I think there's a pH problem more than anything. And there's something it could be in the small intestine. Um, but I, I, to get this, to, I would have to do like a, an hour kind of history to get all this data. So mm -hmm. I don't want to, I just suggest come to the summit. Because I'm going to cover malabsorption, I'm going to cover nutrients. It's going to be very vital. There you okay. go. What do you got? Well, I've been just listening to you. It was a very oh, good. That was okay. a really uh, a cool question. Well, now I know what to talk about tomorrow not morning that, when I wake up. Not that I am. We'll I'm extend that. Un, it's unfortunately. To be continued I'm tomorrow morning when I wake <laughs> up. Before my I'm eyes gonna, are open. Yeah, I've, yeah. I'll, I'll give you maybe a little seminar on that. Okay. Thank you. Melinda, you're from Florida. You had a question about extended fast on keto. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Dr. Berg, and hi, Karen. Um, yeah, I I have autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's. I've got uh, adrenal fatigue. Um, I am seeing an integrative and doing um, IV chelation and a bunch of other things for heavy metal toxicity. I what had initially lost in 2015 went from 290 to 160 doing a candida-free diet from my integrative prior. Uh, I'm now, um, but I started gaining weight due to stressors and went up to 226, started the intermittent fasting, found you, started doing uh, more of the uh, extended fasting because I had I got a life app and it says you have five stages of uh, fasting that you can, as you exceed 72 hours, you can start rebuilding some of your immune cells. Um, I re yesterday I finished a 140 hour fast. Um, wanted to go longer, couldn't do it though. Body mm -hmm. just wouldn't do it. Um, wanted to know what your thoughts are on that. Um, well, I think I know what you're trying to do because we're, the extended fasts are really, really beneficial for autoimmune stuff and so that's going to help you and so you're doing the right thing you're actually going as long as you can then you're backing off um, make sure that while you're doing that you're taking nutrients just because your body does not store zinc for example and other nutrients it's not a fat soluble like vitamin and so what happens if you run out and then you need zinc for the immune system for repair even though when you're doing fasting your body does start developing more antioxidants just from that alone. Um, but I think what you should look into to just to, as the icing on the cake um, without the sugar, and that would be vitamin D3. I would take more of that. I would take minimally 30,000 I use. There's no um, consensus on how much someone needs as a minimum, and there's a lot of conflicting data on taking too much, like it being toxic. The side effect from large amounts of vitamin D don't have to do with vitamin D. It has to do with the calcium that could build up. But if you just cut down your dairy and get the benefits from vitamin D therapeutically, because you may have certain issues with absorption of vitamin D, and but the benefit of vitamin D for autoimmune and inflammatory stuff is off the charts. It's uh, every single immune cell has a receptor for vitamin D. So that's the area I would go into, and then take the K2 with it, minimize the dairy, and then um, that way you're not going to have a calcium problem, but you get the benefits of that. Thanks for your question. All right, Karen. Um, looks like we're ready for a lot of questions. Um, we've got a lot of uh, spare time here. Okay. What do we got? All right. Well, a couple of people are asking about the summit, so I figure we should just say that you can go to drberg.com and there's a summit video. Or video or you can Google Healthy Keto Summit, Dr. Berg Healthy Keto Summit. Uh, either way, you can find out where it is. It's close to uh, Washington, D.C., just uh, across the river in Maryland. Flying to Reagan National. Yep. And um, someone else is asking about the uh, Keto Fast tea. You can uh, look at that also on the drberg.com website. <coughs> Yeah, that, that's basically, you know, it's just going to help you fast longer See, and without that's the really hunger. really good. gives you the antioxidants. It's a, you're going to find when you, because when you're fasting, it's hard not to have anything. So, and you don't want to be drinking coffee. You don't want the caffeine. So you drink this fasting tea and you're just going to be more comfortable. It's something to 
do while you're fasting, and it'll extend your fasting. Now, I can't find the question, but someone here said, uh, breaking the fast is more important than the fasting itself. Is there any? Well, I, I, I'm guessing your point was you probably have to put importance on breaking the fast as an important thing. Not that it's more important than fasting, but just that you have to know how to do it. Because oh, if you, and how if to you, break the If fast. you do prolonged fasting and you sit down and have this huge meal with all these fats, like, like you're used to doing, like if you're doing like one meal a day, you're going to have a problem because your, your body is getting too many nutrients too fast and it can create these shifts with electrolytes and you can kind of get, even get sick. So you want to go light. He's into it slowly, that. Karen. Yes. You should have um, told me that before <laughs> I ate that meal. It's in one of my videos. Meal. It's in one of my videos. <laughs> That's my pat answer. Okay. I'm going to start sending you to my videos. All right. As you're accumulating more questions, I'm going to go to Emily from Connecticut. Yeah. Had a real interesting question. Go ahead. It's on menopause and cortisone. Hi, good morning, Dr. Berg and good Karen, how are you? Hi, I'm having a real hard time with my menopause, and I'm taking everything that you said. I'm on my nutritionalist. I'm doing electrolyte every day, apple cider vinegar. I bought the adrenal cortisol support, and I didn't think it worked, so you said try the isoflavonase. I did that. It seems to be okay. I've been admitting myself to the hospital because I didn't understand what it was going on, and I had the doctor do a... Uh, uh, hormonal test and some full-blown menopause now mm -hmm. and I want to know what I can do to improve it because it really have me in a mess literally yeah okay and I don't know what else to do with the tightness in the chest the throat the feeling that comes over me and, and stuff like that now did you have all of Is your there any take on that have you had any of your hormones tested yes and they told me that I'm um, all he, I asked to do it, and then he called me back and told me that I'm in full menopause. I'm uh, just on 52, right. and, um, and I had a hysterectomy prior to did that. They sh did they show you your hormone levels and how, how low they no, are? No, he didn't. Which Get that report. No, because I, you, I look at your video. Yeah. Get that, okay. re get that report. Get the actual data. See what hormone is low. Like, is it, is, what bottomed out? Is it progesterone? Is it testosterone? Is it estrogen? Let's say, for example, your testosterone is like zero, because uh, you want to find out what's causing all these issues, and you also probably want to do a test on cortisol uh, to see what's happening with that as well to find out what it is. And you're trying to, you just take the the hormones, look at the normals, and see which one is the greatest departure from the normal, and focus in on that. I just released a video, if I'm not mistaken, did I release that video on menopause? You know what? I don't think I release that video. I'll release it tomorrow. Um, there is a very well-researched herb that can help people with a estrogen deficiency. No, I think I did release that. You should, you should look that video up and then and get that herb because it's been uh, thoroughly tested and, um, and with great benefits for menopause, and it's from Thailand. Don't get an imitation one from from some other country because it's only uh, grown in two places in Thailand. But watch my video on that. That is specifically for women that have low estrogen and need to raise it. So that's what I would recommend. Okay? Thanks. All right, Karen. Okay, is kombucha okay? Yeah, now the thing about kombucha, read the back of the label because some of it has like six, seven, eight, nine, ten grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. That's too much. Now realize also kombucha is very carbonated. Don't shake it. It'll explode. And don't drink the whole thing because you can really get a little too much acid like I did and I just couldn't sleep for a day or so. So just drink half of it at a time and dilute it with water. But it's a really good thing for your digestive system. I would look for the ones with two grams of sugar. That's really hard to come by. A lot of them are, are four, five, six grams of sugar, but it's also really easy to make. And you can just yeah. let it sit for a, a long time so that there's no sugar in it. If you like it a little sweeter, add a, a drop of stevia. Um, okay, from your experience, is there anything that you can do to assist in eliminating calcium buildup anywhere? Yeah. This one is asking around the heart, but calcium builds up 
all over the place, right? <coughs> yeah, people tend as they age, they start to get calcium in the wrong places, uh, soft tissue. Uh, the, the big one is the vitamin K2. You need more vitamin K2. It comes in micrograms. I like the natural version. It's called MK7. Um, but So you need that uh, K2. That's one thing that's really, really important. Um, I did some videos on, on calcification of the body, so you can watch that. Um, the other thing that's uh, important is that you're not taking any type of uh, calcium supplements like calcium carbonate. You don't want to do that. You want to just, um, you know, take the K2 is going to be the biggest thing and start eating healthy generally to help balance this calcium out because usually the calcium is coming in there to heal something or patch something in as a Band-Aid. And if you're actually um, not handling the reason why calcium is accumulating, because it's not just about calcium, and I'm talking like too much blood sugar issues or sugar in general, then that could be what you need to solve first so you don't need to have your body patch up something. Okay. Good. I just found my favorite question. Yeah. We're waiting for that. Go ahead. Does the keto diet work in Australia? No. No, 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 no. no. Only in countries like uh, India, the U.S., yeah. and Mexico. France. I think it works Didn't you have France. another question that you were going to ask me? It oh, I just want to, of course the keto diet works in Australia. They Australians know. are they stubborn know. people, so they may not give up certain things. But well, there's a question you said um, you were going to ask me. It was something like, um, I, want, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to do the ketogenic diet. What do I recommend? Was that one of them? Oh, no, no, no. I did ask you that one. That was the first one I asked you, that it was, I'm not no, on the keto. I thought it was a different one. <coughs> okay, so here's the question. You want to lose weight, you want to lose weight fast, uh -huh. but you don't want to change your diet and you don't want to do the keto and you don't want to exercise. I don't want to give up any dairy. What do you I do other than chop off your leg? Oh, that was my answer. Yeah. Um, you can do intermittent fasting, but the problem is if you don't, if you want to eat five times a day and you want to eat what you want and you want to lose weight, you know, I can't help you. Hey, John, you're <laughs> from uh, South Carolina. Go ahead. Yes. and. Hopefully, in about 10 weeks, I plan to donate a third of my liver, and I'm concerned about my post-op nutrition. I'm 59 years old, been doing keto for 20 months, and I have a low ferritin, and that's another issue. But anyhow, what would you recommend post-op nutrition fighting some of the hospital diets? Yeah, mm. yeah. Bring your own food. Yeah, I think you're going to need a really high-quality trace mineral. And also, what I would do, especially for, for iron, Yes, high quality beef liver, but also um, sea kelp. Sea kelp grown on, or actually in a really healthy uh, environment, is, uh, has not only the vitamins and the trace minerals, but protein as well. There's um, great iodine. There's, um, more, there's like 10 times as much calcium as in dairy. So you'll get a lot of the trace minerals that way. And then the other thing too is that you need the fat soluble vitamins, so you need to start a a good um, healthy virgin cod liver oil. Um, I would also, that will give you the vitamin D and the uh, vitamin A. And then I would also do a good nutritional yeast to start building up these, uh, these B vitamins. Uh, and all this is going to help, and I know, what, I know what you're going through because the food at the hospital is just going to be so high in carbs. So I would do trace minerals, minerals, B vitamins, and a lot of salad and vegetables for your vitamin C. And then I think that way you'll donate a real healthy liver. It's hard to find a healthy liver nowadays. Well, and that is so Especially commendable that one. you are doing that. That is outstanding, and um, we'll be interested to hear how that goes. So definitely call back, and we wish you and the recipient all the best in that. That is amazing. That is a selfless activity for sure. That's right. Now here's a question for yeah. you. So a lot of people call asking about diseases and things like that. What kind of nutrients would you recommend to heal a broken heart? <laughs> you mean like a lo after a loss? Yeah, or just I think you know. the the best thing um, <coughs> is the uh, is some heart extract. No, you you need um, B vitamins. Uh, specifically, B one would really be beneficial, but a lot of Bs and uh, probably nutritional yeast. It just takes the stress out. 
and then go for long walks, get a lot of space. This is really um, important for um, teenagers too. And vitamin Kids, D. Teenagers. Yeah, vitamin D is really good for depression. Yeah, depression. School is so stressful. Some people have trouble with bullying. There's a lot of different ways that you can experience loss and learn stress. Martial learn arts. <laughs> learn martial arts. Actually, is very very good. But um, yeah, so you know, in everyday life. You know, people are running into this stuff all the time. Job loss, spouse loss, s losing Steve's hair as he's trying to get us to end, um, heartache, yeah. all kinds of things. That's right. And that isn't just, uh, you know, something you have to suck up and, and ride out, but you should be doing nutrition to help through that. Yeah, and when you do healthy keto and, and, and IF, what happens, it does stabilize your mood. It brings you up. Uh, for various reasons, which I'm not going to get into because of time right now, because mm -hmm. it's already passed. Mm -hmm. But um, the combination of that and the B vitamins and the vitamin D. And the long walks, looking Long walks are going to help you greatly. Right. Regardless and of your age. you want to mention one thing, last thing about the summit. I have to mention the summit because there's still questions coming in about it. Go to drberg.com. You can learn all about the summit. It is only at the Gaylord in Maryland, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. You'll fly into D.C. It's Labor Day weekend. It's going to be a blast. Uh, it was an absolute love fest last year. People were just the best people I've ever met in my whole life. Um, so we really encourage that you come. Yeah. And, um, and by the way, last year, the vendor booths, I've never seen this at any uh, you know, convention like that, are packed with people. So obviously the people that are come, what they're offering is very, very pertinent to keto lifestyle and intermittent fasting because I've never seen such long lines. And I'll tell you what, that's why we packed in so many more vendors this year, I'm sure, because what a grand success. Yeah, that was really, really great. And the vendors, by the way, it, w it was great for the attendees because they had all of these resources, not just how to test their blood and ketones and all of that stuff, but all, and this year, you know, food choices and things, and this year there's just so much more for you. But on the flip side, the vendors who do nothing but go to conventions and keto cons and this and that told us afterwards that they had never attended a convention with such educated attendees and where over 85% of the people were actually in ketosis when they did uh, ketosis testing. And um, well, I think that because we have so many people from YouTube and Facebook yeah, who've been watching the videos. People. So they're coming, they've watched a lot of videos. And that is my goal is just to educate people so they have all the data. So that's, I'm really excited about that, having you guys be thoroughly educated. Yeah. And um, that means that you've been watching those videos. So on that note, thanks for the great comments. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. See you at the summit.